Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here. Um, so a couple of days ago I recorded a really long video. Um, it's about two hours long and we're going to, it's kind of just spend the morning in the studio with me kind of thing. And it's not a vlog or anything 21st century like that. It's just <coughs> top down watching what I'm doing. Um, and there are three paintings in it, and I hope you find it interesting. Um, but we're not going to put that up until after Thanksgiving. So anyway, today I've been uh, um, trying to decide what to paint, as I often do. Um, and I was just going to show you, before I start, I was just going to show you a few of the things that I've done in um, this 365 Days of Art in Nature book, because this is where I generally turn to to try to get ideas. So I, I usually, in the evening after we've had supper, dinner, whatever, I um, come to this book and um, flick through it and look at what I've done over the last, how long it is. We're on page, um, page what now? Up to page, I think I skipped forward. No, I didn't, no. Well, I'm around about page 90. So I've been doing this for three or four months now. And uh, it's interesting, actually, if you haven't got this book um, and you fancy it, um, get, it, get it for yourself for Christmas because I've found that this discipline of doing um, at least one silly little sketch a day, practising brushwork and water control and all that kind of thing, I think it's very helpful and I think it's... Um, it's, what's the word, it has helped me with my imagination, which is sadly lacking. I have always said, and I think it's true, that I have no imagination at all. Um, but this, at this great age I am where I'm going to be, I don't know how old next year, I'm not telling anyone. Um, yeah, this has definitely, as I go through, I can see from the beginning going forward, I flick through quickly, um, yeah, I'm quite interested to see what's actually come out of my paintbrush. So you will find the same thing if you get yourself this book and just without worrying about whether it's going to be good enough or whether anyone is going to like it or whether it will make a good Christmas card or whether you ought to frame it or whether it's a waste of paper or whether the paints aren't any good or whether you are just a complete waste of space and you ought to be doing the ironing. Um, just forget all of that if you can and just paint and um, it's good for the soul and you'll surprise yourself because I tell you what I surprised myself I have no interest in painting wild animals not no no that's not true I have no interest I had no interest I have no interest in painting big African animals but this book forced me to paint a whale and an elephant and a um, leopard and also a lion and this is the one in the book and this is mine and I was absolutely amazed it actually looks slightly more like a lion than a cat so you know pussy cat so you never know what's going to come out this is yesterday's work and um, this is some robins in the holly tree and upon this there's a purpose to my rambling um, upon this thing is dis, dis, designed to, 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 uh, is designed today's painting. Um, a few more bits of ramble scribbling here. I quite like that. Um, anyway, so that's that's where that started. What we're doing today. Um, then last night I did that. That's irrelevant. And um, so this is what we're going to do today. This is kind of a um, little bit similar to, I don't know if you know the Andy Warhol Christmas paintings. I hadn't heard of them until today, um, but I came across them online 
having already decided to do robins in a tree. So I just want to clear that up that this is, I'm not copying Andy Warhol, I just found out today that he did something similar, so I'm in good company. Now I've done a sketch and I'm, I've photocopied it. This is the original. This is the original sketch. And I did a photocopy, which is not particularly good because the copy is running out of ink, but that's okay because it's only for the shape. You turn it over and do it that way for okay. Anyway, I just wanted to make it the same shape. I've got a piece of Fabriano hot pressed um, watercolor paper here, but it could be anything. I don't think it matters a bit. I couldn't decide what to use. And this piece had a little mark on the back, which has now come off. But anyway, so I chose that because it was flawed. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place that where I want it to be. Because another thing that's quite hard is beginning, isn't it? And you, you sort of think, oh my God, I'm going to put it in the wrong place. It's going to end up too high. So don't take that risk. Cut it out, or if you can, make a photocopy, cut it out, and just draw dots. You don't have to draw the whole thing. Just to give you an idea um, where you want it to be. That's where the stem is going to be. You can do it like that. Now, there's lots of different ways you could go about this, <clears throat> um, making this painting. I did it by um, sketching it first in ink and then colouring it in. So you could do that. You can also paint it first and then go over it in ink. So um, I'm still not quite sure about that. But I think what I am going to do is I'm going to put an outline in in pencil, a sort of tree outline, as you do. It's not going to be too regular, just like that. And then there's this, the doodah, and here's the what's it. And then now we're going to fill that in. So we've got the outline of the shape, and we're going to fill that in with um, robins. So I think I'm going to go into the pen. This is a 0.1 Stettler pigment liner. I probably actually should use one of these, the Micron. I wonder if it will work. The reason I'm saying that, yes, I think it will. Um, the Stettler ones, they're not completely waterproof, so they can run when you put paint on. So it's just suddenly occurred to me. Um, Oh, here comes the rain. It's just suddenly occurred to me that if I do it with that, it will probably run. So let me just test it. Hopefully it will be all right. Okay, so... Um, hopefully the rain isn't going to be annoying. It's kind of all dark as well. I have to do some... Um, colour adjustment and light adjustment on the uh, on the video. I'm just wondering whether I ought to put that out flat. If I do put it like that, that's easier to paint with and then I need to cover it up so that it doesn't get mucky. Okay, can you still see that? Just move the camera a little bit. Um, I'll talk about the paints and everything afterwards, but I just wanted to um, reassure you that drawing birds is so easy if you start with the legs. Just put two little legs like that um, and um, two toes point pointing forward and one backwards. I think they might have three actually, but it looks a bit like a spider if you put three, but anyway, so. And then just put a circle on top an oval like that. Then give him a beak, give him a tail, give him an eye and a wing. And lo and behold, you have a bird. And you can put their legs in any direction, but remember they do have legs. Longer than you might think. So I'm going to just scatter little birds. Some of them I might just do by doing the oval first. 
But if you do the legs first, sometimes that's easier. I'm going to give them all little perky um, tails. Some of them might be facing forward, and then we just do a little V for the beak. If they're facing forward, sometimes you might want to do the legs splayed apart like that. And then after, after we've drawn them, we'll put them on their branches. And sometimes you can start with the, with the beak. The main thing is not to fuss. Sometimes you might want to start with the tail. You'll find your own way. The thing to do is just to start somewhere. It's nearly the end of November. So we're just covering the tree with little birds. You can change their eyes later if you want. I'm sure you've got your own way by now of painting birds. If you want some inspiration, look back to the uh, the birds we did in the earlier part of the year. I think it was the summer. There we are then. So now we have a tree full of birds. They're all going to be robins. Um, and uh, the next thing I think probably, are you dry? Yes, you're dry. Is to give them something to stand on. So I'm going to this, in case you're wondering, well, some people recently said, oh, it would be very good if you would teach us how to draw. And I don't, I don't know, a lot of people probably would love to learn to draw, but they probably realize that um, it's actually quite hard to teach someone to draw. All you can do, in fact, I don't really believe in teaching at all. I believe in giving people the opportunity to learn. You can't teach somebody something. You can only show them what you do and give them the opportunity to learn. So it's facilitating is what I believe in, facilitating. So the idea, perhaps, and the technique, you can show them. You can't make them be able to draw or paint. It's just not possible. That's what I believe, and uh, a lifetime of being a teacher in a school, various schools, uh, didn't make me change my mind on that one. You learn. Usually you learn if you like the person who's teaching you. I remember when, when I was at school in uh, Chislehurst in London, the subjects that I liked best were the ones that were taught by the teachers that I was slightly in love with. And um, that's, that's the way it goes. If you have a, an emotional attachment to the person who's teaching you or trying to help you learn, um, then you'll learn better. I think that's true. It's getting really windy again out there now. Anyway, so um, going back to learning how to draw, I thought that when I started to do this one, I thought to myself, well, if we do it starting with a drawing, then people will automatically learn a little bit about drawing. So that's what I'm going to do. So now I've given each bird a twig of fir tree to stand on. And now we've got to fill in the whole of the rest of it. We could paint the birds first. Maybe we'll do that. I think that might be quite nice. Then we'll let them dry and then we'll come in and do a bit more of the drawing part of it. 
And if you think of this as being just like doodling, like you do when you're on the telephone, um, you'll probably find that you're learning to draw without even thinking about it. So robins, they tend to have um, reddish breasts, don't they? Um, so we'll mix up some red. I don't think we want it to be too garish. I don't know. It's just so we'll just put some red and don't worry about staying inside the lines. If you come outside the lines, it doesn't matter. This is, after all, modern watercolour, as they call it these days, whatever that's supposed to mean. Um, so anyway, we just put some little red breasts in there for them. And I'm going to then now um, just paint over these twigs of her. This is why it's so important not to have a pen that runs. So rather than trying to draw all those individual little sprigs of fur, which would take us a lifetime or two, um, I'm just doing it like this. You, of course, can do any other way that you choose. It's, this is just an idea. OK, now the rest of the bird, in reality, they're very um, brownish, but I think that a greyish brown, a, a bluey grey is probably better. So these are, if I was God and I was designing the world, that's not meant to be blasphemy, um, I would design robins with grey backs. And I think in America they're different anyway from the ones we have here. So this is my compromise on a robin. Robin red breast with a grey suit on. We have a robin in our garden who arrived a little while ago and uh, he's settling in. Leave a bit of white on it so it looks a bit fresher. Okay, now um, I might put the hair dryer on that for a second. I don't really want it to run. I think it's okay. Um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, the reason I'm using this hot press paper is because it's smooth and um, that makes it easier to, to draw with a, with a fine liner. Okay, so there are various other things I want to put on this here tree. Um, and um, so as you can see here, um, I'm not sure what I'm going to put where. We will, of course, want a star on the top, but maybe we'll put that on later. Maybe I'll put some, some holly next. That definitely always gives a very, oops, mean to do that. A festive look, doesn't it? I was looking at the holly leaves on the tree outside a little while ago and noticing how uh, the, the, the leaves vary in shape a lot. They're not all the sort of traditional holly leaf shape. So if you find them hard to draw, don't worry. They're, they find them, They find it hard to grow as well. They don't always grow right. So there's those, and of course, holly always has berries. And we'll make those when we paint them, we'll make those nice and bright.
because I think those will add a touch of uh, festivity. Okay, and I wanted to um, put some candy canes in. Silence while I concentrate on getting the shape roughly right. Um, maybe we put one up here as well. That one looks a little bit like a hockey stick, but never mind. Um, okay, and then from the branches we can have some balls and maybe some little parcels, packages. This is quite fun, doing this. Just make it up as you go along. It's an awful lot easier than decorating the Christmas tree in real life. Um, and um, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. what else could we have? I think we need some music. These birds are singing to one another. And uh, we'll put some more music up here. And up here as well, he really looks like he's having a good whistle. So we're going to carry on with more uh, fur as well. We're going to try and fill up all the space. You know, it's just a matter of what with. Mustn't forget to draw in the pot on the bottom. And I think the best way of going about this is to, um, to do some of the drawing and then um, colour it in a bit and then you can sort of see, I've got some holly down here that I think is probably in the wrong place. I got carried away there, but that means I have to put some more on the other side to balance that out. And then I'll have to put some more fur coming down here and a bit more fur coming down here, perhaps. And um, yes, I'm going to colour that in now. So back to the paintbrush. I'm using a small paintbrush here. This is only a size three. I don't usually. Um, but anyway, so now we need some nice I think it's bright green for the holly. And I'm sure I'm going to find, once I've coloured this holly in, that the balance will have shifted a bit and I'll need to put in some more. We're getting very close to 75,000 subscribers on the channel now. I think we've got, uh, what have we got, 74, 73, I think, which is amazing and uh, quite a milestone to get to 75,000. We're not far off. So we're really, once we get there, we'll be looking at 100,000, which is, uh, I mean, we've been doing this now for two years and uh, Thanks to you wonderful supporters and your faithful return to the videos every week, every day, every day, all the time. It's amazing. So, 
Yeah, it's a wonderful thing. We're so pleased to be able to be reaching so many people. Um, okay, well, I can see already that I will be wanting to put more holly in. Um, so I'll just use up some of that paint that's on my brush, make these a bit darker. Don't forget they will dry lighter. Um, if you're wondering which paint I'm using, I've got a real mixture here of all sorts of bits and pieces. I've got various palettes. I've got my mixed up green one here, actually, which I'd forgotten about, which I should have here because I probably could use that. I will use it. Um, yeah, so, okay, so now I'm going to go to the red. We have some nice dark red for the hol um, holly berries. For me, a painting like this is good, it's good um, discipline, as well as it's good fun, because it is a discipline to, to paint with a small brush. I don't usually do that. I usually slap things on and say, oh, that'll do. And I'm a bit like that even with a small brush. But um, sometimes it's a good idea to change what you normally do, do something slightly different. And uh, this is one of those. I've been trying to do that all Christmas because Christmas is very traditional, isn't it? And you tend to end up painting a lot of the same things. Christmas trees, for example. But why not try to do it a bit differently? Try to think of something a bit different. Um, okay, now, you know what we can do? These balls, we can paint them gold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my gold paint here, my new fine tech set. But I'm going to have to activate it because you have to let water sit on it for about three minutes. And it soaks up the water actually and goes quite soft. So we'll put that there and I'll remember because I'm going to do gold balls on the tree, of course. Why not? Okay, so it still needs a lot more filling in. And um, so I need my pen back. And we don't need to join. We don't need to join the branches all together. They can be. But there is quite a fashion at the moment for what I, I'm calling elemental painting, which is uh, where people don't make a, um, a composition. They just bunch a bunch of. They just plonk a bunch of elements on the paper and uh, not connected to anything. So, you know, a page with a fireplace and a Santa Claus and a um, mug of hot chocolate and um, all these separate and a, a leaf and a pine cone and a berry, um, all these things just sitting there totally disconnected, which is, I suppose that's modern watercolour. I don't know. Is that modern watercolour? Anyway, I'm not criticising it. I'm just saying it is obviously a thing at the moment because I'm seeing a lot of it as I do my research. And uh, I've never painted like that at all, ever. That's because I'm not modern, I suppose. But anyway, so I'm sort of saying to myself as I'm doing this, oh, it doesn't, the, the uh, elements do not need to connect. And that makes it actually, guess what, a lot easier. So I'm not really thinking about um, composition. And of course, no perspective either. And uh, yeah, mustn't forget up here, this is the top of the tree there. So we will need to put a star here. I think we probably need some more holly between these two birds. Maybe a bit more music. It's another ball here, perhaps a little parcel here. Um, I 
Maybe we'll just have some berries to fill in some of these spaces. Okay, so next step, go back to the brush and um, we'll do the rest of the green, I think. And maybe we'll make it a slightly different green, these holly leaves, because, you know, there are so many different greens. Make it up. Which one did I use? That one, wasn't it? Uh, I know I did a lot more holly than that. Can't see anymore. Oh, there's one. There's one. Okay, and then let's paint our sprigs of you can come in again and, and do a second layer if you want, if it's dried a bit pale, as it will, inevitably. So sometimes you just need to, you know, it's not that anything's gone wrong, it's just that you need to emphasise the colour a little bit. I think next thing, if I can still see, is to do some gold balls. So we'll just pick up some of this gold here and we'll make it quite nice and thick so that it's fully opaque. over here somewhere. Right, and then perhaps the darker gold. My goodness, it's gone dark. Let's we'll do the little parcels in dark gold. three. This is where you notice, you see, when you come back and you think, oh, maybe there should be another one somewhere. Anyway, so I probably will paint some of these berries in gold. We can add a few more. We can always go around them afterwards. With pen. to paint the pot. Maybe a little bit brown. And then some of like that. Okay, it's now gone very, very dark and very noisy, so I'm just going to stop now and I'll come back and finish that off after lunch. Okay, so I'm back from lunch. Everything's nice and dry. <coughs> and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, well, we probably could do with a few extra things in some of these spaces. So maybe if I can fit them in, we'll put in some stars and I will color them in in gold. 
Um, so just kind of finding, finding little spaces where we can squeeze things in so that it looks really complete. A star is a good thing. And uh, sort of even it out a bit along the bottom, maybe. I know it's not quite symmetrical, but uh, I don't think that uh, is going to upset anybody too much. Maybe a few more little balls because they, they're nice and shiny. When you add the gold to them, they do stand out quite well. And uh, could darken down the birds a little bit, make them a little bit more um, red, I suppose, if you wanted to. And we could put in a few um, that's right, ignore the dogs. I'm just having a little thing. You could put in some spirals, perhaps where there are gaps and you don't really know what else to put. Always like the look of a spiral. just for the sake of filling up the space. And then we'll take my brush again. And uh, let me just wet some of this. I'm gonna have to wait, I think it was three minutes for the paint to soften a little bit. So we we'll just go into, we'll go into the birds and darken their little breasts a little bit. And we want some red, I think, because I think we've got some um, some berries that haven't been coloured in. And that could be red. We could have a red ball, couldn't we? They all have to be gold. Um, I know I saw some more berries somewhere because there was some holly that hadn't been coloured in. Um, it's like one of those games that you play, you know, spot the difference. Spot the difference, yes, that's what it's like. Find the blank holly, I know it's there somewhere. Okay, so we'll pick up some gold. Just make that nice and thick. And um, let's see if we can paint these stars. The um, This fine tech gold goes right over the lines. So you can do a star in that quick way with the lines showing, but it doesn't matter because when you paint over them, they disappear, the lines, more or less. You have to make sure that it's nice and the consistency is is thick and then it's pretty much opaque and there's a couple of balls to be filled in oh there's that holly leaf i was looking for i can see that before um there's another star There's another star. I'm going to do a gold holly leaf. And there's another star. I'm getting close to the end now. I think we might have to do a little bit more green. I thought I put another ball somewhere, but I can't find it. I thought it was down here, but I think I must have done it red. So I'm going to change that to gold. And that one too. Right. And a bit more green on some of these branches. That haven't been coloured in yet. That holly leaf. There's more than one way of painting this design. 
you could paint each individual sprig first and then come in with the um, the pen afterwards to give it more shape if you wanted to. You could just paint the whole thing. You don't have to use a pen at all. If you haven't got one, for example, that would be a solution. Just don't use one. Uh, yep, I think we've got some red dots down here to fill in. And there's a couple more there. And there's, I'm sure I saw another one somewhere. Oh well, let's put one there. And I think that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this. this little fantasy world of a tree full of robins. If you did like it, if you enjoyed it, give us a like and subscribe and uh, turn on notifications and all of that stuff. And uh, please go to our website, dianeanton.com where we have sketches for loads and loads of videos, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, which um, we've done over the last few years. Uh, whatever you're looking for, you can search for it and you'll be able to find it pretty much. Um, yeah, and uh, you can join Patreon and you can join membership here on YouTube and la di da di da So, I will let you go in a minute. I'm just strengthening up some of the, um, the line work. Just had a new sofa delivered, a new couch today when I went back to the house for lunch. Big lorry pulled up outside. Waiting for it for two months. Finally arrived. in time for Christmas. Uh -huh. My husband will be back from Egypt on Sunday, hopefully, if all goes well. And uh, so, yeah, I think what I'm going to do, I won't keep you, but I will just add a little bit more dark, and dark line to some of these branches. And uh, then you'll see what it looked like at the end once you come back and have a look at the thumbnail. So I'll let you go and I'll see you again soon, everybody. Bye for now. Bye bye.